for my buddy, the craziest man in show business. Give it up for Marty! Also, you guys feeling okay, man? Yeah! Man, yeah. yeah! Also, Molly, did they get down earlier or what? Yeah. I saw one girl in the back. Ah, awesome! Awesome! And Martin was there to pick her up, weren't you? Nice. <laughs> Now, one thing is, is for sure, it is very warm up here. And I noticed that a lot of you guys here in the room are, are already drinking these slushy drinks that they sell outside. All right, now, let me warn any of the ladies that are drinking the red ones. I know they look like Slurpees. But they're not, okay? What's in those drinks is actually 151 grain alcohol. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful. When they sell those outside, you guys, seriously, they should have like a, a disclaimer video that pops up when you order it. Like the girl walks to the bar, you know, I would like to try one of the Slurpee thingies. You know, are you sure? Yes. And then the video pops up. <laughs> this is not what you think it is. <laughs> be very careful. I can handle whatever. <laughs> oh, bitch, please. <laughs> Are you guys ready for a great time tonight? Yeah. Martin, are you ready? Let's do it, players. Also, are you ready? Yeah. Kicking off our new season of Stand Up Revolution, you guys, is a friend of ours that we've been touring with for the last four months. Believe me when I tell you, this guy is a superstar in the making. Coming to you all the way from South Africa. Put your hands together. Show your love for our friend, Mr. Trevor Noah. I'm glad to be here, man. This was my dream. My dream was to come to America, you know? Not, not for a job or money or anything. I've got a great life back home. I always came here because I wanted one thing, and that is I always wanted to be black. Um, I grew up in South Africa during a time known as apartheid. And for those who don't know, apartheid was a law in the country that made it illegal for black and white people to mix, uh, which was awkward for me because I grew up in a mixed family. Uh, well, with me being the mixed one in the family. Uh, <laughs> My mother's a black woman, South African, and my father's Swiss, from Switzerland, uh, so he was a white man. And, ba well, he still is, it's not like he changed. I, uh, I say that, like, through hard work and determination, he became black. No, that, that did not happen. And, sir, you're fine. I see the white guy going, is that part? No, it's not possible. You are fine, sir. He's still very white, very white. And so they got together, my parents, black mom, white dad, which was against the law, but they didn't care. They were mavericks, you know? Yeah, my mom was like, woo, I don't care. I want a white man, woo. And my dad was also, well, you know how the Swiss love chocolate, you know, so he was just, he was in there. And so they got together and they had me, which was illegal, so I was born a crime. Um, which is something they never thought through, because as a family we didn't live together normally. Like in the streets, my father had to walk on the other side of the road and he could just wave at me from far, like a creepy pedophile. So. My mom could walk with me, but if the police showed up, she had to let go and act like I wasn't hers. Every time, like, woo! She's like, it's not mine, it's not mine. I felt like a bag of weed. And one, one fateful day, uh, you know, because I was never given a race, I was never called black, never called white, I, I had the privilege of meeting an American, and he said to me, he said, well, you know, Trevor, it's funny you say that, because if you come out to America, they'll label you as black. I said, really? He said, hell yeah. Everybody's black out there. <laughs> well, I was like, well, I want to be black. Yeah. I bought myself a plane ticket because I found out it's true. Mixed race people are categorized as black in America. Yeah, the only catch is you have to be successful first. <laughs> Before that, they call you mixed, achieve success, and you get upgraded to black. All the famous mixed people have done it. Singers like Alicia Keys and Mariah Carey, mixed, but they say black, right? Tiger Woods, mixed, but they say black golfer. The most famous mixed person on the planet, Barack Obama, mixed, half and half, but you say your first black president. When he was running, he was the mixed candidate. <laughs> now it seems obvious, people are like, yeah, he won. Back then, nobody believed he would win. I remember comedians dissing him. They'd come up and be like, how many of y'all seen that mixed race fool run of a president? Y'all seen that crazy ass mixed fool? How some mixed fool gonna come in? Even a black man can't win. This mixed fool thing gonna win, he gonna win. I see no mixed fool coming out here when in the United States that mixed fool that mixed fool and then he won and all of a sudden they were like my <laughs> so I see 
and I wanted black. So I bought myself a plane ticket. Yeah, 18 hours of flying, that's what I had to sit through. 18 hours of non-stop flying. I didn't sleep a wink. I sat on that plane and I watched every single black American movie and TV show I could find just so I could practice being black. I was not gonna mess up that black opportunity. I just sat there like a madman in my chair, just like watching movies, practicing. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you laugh, but I landed. I landed in Miami, and I was fluent in my black American for shizzle my nizzle. I was just, yeah. I was so black. I was even laughing black. I was like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, my man. I was super black. Till some guy came up to me and was like, oh, yeah, papi. Yeah, yeah, come on, eh? 18 hours of flying, and I still wasn't black. I was Puerto Rican. You guys have been great. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for Trevor Noah! We'll be right back with more Stand Up Revolution! Welcome back to Stand Up Revolution! Oh my God! What a way to kick off our show, you guys. Our first show with Mr. Trevor Noah. Martin, Trevor Noah. Dude, it was amazing, bro. Did you see the women's response to Trevor? <laughs> How many ladies find Trevor's accent incredibly sexy? How many of you guys found Trevor Noah's? <laughs> really, also? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna hate on him. Ladies, you went crazy for him. I know, he's a good looking man. I'm not gay, but if we were locked up, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't even know. I would tear his ass up to the Lion King soundtrack. <laughs> a good looking dude. I gotta tell you guys, Trevor Noah has been on the road with Martin and I for, like I said, the last four months, and uh, he's, a, he's a great friend and a funny, funny man, and uh, any of the stories you guys might have heard about us in the past and the practical jokes, they've all been true, especially when a new guy shows up. <laughs> you know, Trevor's a cool dude, you guys, but we couldn't wait to have fun with him, so let me tell you a quick story. Uh, we were doing a show in a city called Eagle Pass in the state of Texas. Now, uh, got some Tejanos in the house? What's up? <laughs> you far from home, coño. <laughs> so anyway, we're doing a show out in Eagle Pass, Texas. Now, I have a friend of mine named Rick Gutierrez, who's also a comic who was on last season, who lives in San Antonio, Texas, which is about an hour or so away from Eagle Pass. He bought a new car, and he drove from Eagle Pass, or I'm sorry, from San Antonio to Eagle Pass to meet up with us for a show that night. After the show was over, he says, hey, man, he goes, you want to leave a little bit early, and uh, we'll take my car, and you can drive it, and the guys can catch up with us tomorrow in the tour bus. So I'm like, cool, let's take off. So I tell Martin and Trevor and the rest of the guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow night. I'm leaving with Rick. So we get in Rick's car and I get to drive. We head to San Antonio. About 30 minutes into the drive, we start seeing flashing lights on the side of the freeway. And then a big sign that comes up and it says, Immigration Checkpoint Ahead. Okay? Don't worry, this story ends differently. So anyways, I still get nervous. You know, I'm driving and I pull up to the line. And I'm sitting there and I'm just, I'm just waiting for the officer to say something that's going to annoy the hell out of me. So I'm just waiting and here comes the officer and when he saw me he said, Oh, Fluffy! <laughs> and when I heard that in my mind I was like, I'm not going to jail. <laughs> He's like, dude, what are you doing here? I said, well, we have a show tomorrow night in San Antonio. And we're just passing through. Where's your tour bus? I said, well, my tour bus is back in Eagle Pass with the other guys. He goes, can we take a picture? I go, what about, you know, cars coming? He goes, there hasn't been a car here in hours. So we get out of the car. We take some pictures with the immigration officer and the dog. You know, <laughs> We get back inside. And he says, thank you so much for taking the picture with me. I really appreciate it, man. We're just bored right now. I go, really? You guys are bored? Yeah, we're bored. I said, well, my tour bus is going to be passing through here in about two hours. And I says, we have a new guy on the bus who's from South Africa, and he's, uh, he's been bragging about his immigration status and how he never has problems with customs or immigration because all of his paperwork is always in order. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> if you're bored. Next morning, you guys, I get a text from Trevor, okay? You see how cool and calm he is. That text sounded mad. I just look at it and it said, you're a dick. <laughs> I couldn't 
get to Trevor fast enough to hear the story, right? So Martin and I, we pull up to the theater, and uh, we see Trevor. And he already told me in the car, dude, Trevor's mad. I'm like, I see Trevor. I'm like, Trevor, you okay? And he just went off. Gabriel, it was insanity, I tell you. It was insanity. They pulled me off the tour bus like I was a common criminal. I wasn't wearing any pants. They took away my passport, my cell phone, all of my money. They stuck me in a jail cell with other criminals. Don't you have anything to say? I said, dude, you said you wanted to be black. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with more Stand Up Revolution. <laughs> Welcome back to Stand Up Revolution. Are you guys ready for more show? Yeah. Martin, are you ready? I'm ready, player. Let's do it. Also, are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why was that funny? I don't know, but it was, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, our next performer. I had the pleasure of working with him on one of the biggest comedy shows in the world, The Wild. 94.9 comedy show in San Francisco with over 20,000 people and I saw him go on stage and rip the building apart. Put your hands together, show your love for Mr. Dove David Off. The band, keep it going for the band. Uh, for the viewers at home, if you don't know, we're shooting this right next door to the Seminole Indian Hard Rock Casino. Uh, and I've been staying there for the last day, and uh, I haven't seen a single Indian. <laughs> I haven't seen one Indian there. And then you realize the government grants the American Indian gaming permits as reparations for past wrongs. Just seemed like a funny way to say sorry to somebody, you know? The government was like, hey, Indians, gather around. You know how we raped and murdered and obliterated your culture? Do you guys like blackjack? <laughs> you could love this game, fellas. <laughs> Stop lying to me. Stop lying. I was, wa I was just watching a special on, on Christopher Columbus. And I'm like, I'm not, after a while, I'm like, we're still celebrating Columbus. What did Columbus do? What did he do? He discovered America? How do you discover something that already had seven million Indians living there? How's that a discovery? That's like, I take your drink, and you're like, what the? And I'm like, look at what I just discovered, man. Ah. It's not a discovery. It's a discovery for white people, but that doesn't make it a discovery. Did the first black guy who banged a white chick run back to the village like, fellas? You know they make this in white. This is my discovery. You see? You see that? Those are what? I don't know. You know, I was walking around the casino earlier, and I saw, I saw, I saw people with kids. See all these kids walking through. I'm like, could could people call it with the kids? Not everybody has to have a kid. Not everybody. Can we have a screening process? Just some sort of basic questionnaire. You want to have a baby? Fill it out. Do you have? Are you a complete screw up? Yeah. No babies for you, man. <laughs> No babies. And then everybody's like, they're like, how do we define who's a screw up and who's not? Let's start here. Are you in and out of prison on methamphetamine related felonies? You are? No babies for you. You know? And by the way, if you take the Bible or the Quran literally, word for word, no babies for you either. And you know who else? If you think Red Lobster is a legitimately good restaurant, I like it too, but no babies for you. It's just that we're always, we're always, everybody's celebrating, everybody gets caught, everybody's celebrating Mother's Day and Father's Day, and that's great. We should celebrate it. That's a hard job. But can we also celebrate a day of self-restraint? A day where somebody just said to themselves, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not going to burden the world with my issues. Can we have a national pull-out day? Just, ah! Have a good life, everybody. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for Tom David Off. We'll be right back with more Stand Up Revolution. Welcome back to Stand Up Revolution. 
of Revolution. My name is Gabriel Iglesias, the artist formerly known as El Pikachu. <laughs> you guys, last year on season one of Stand Up Revolution, we were very honored that Ozo Motley wrote that song, Hey, It's Fluffy. And we did a really cool music video where I got to pick up Martin and the Beatle, and it was really fun. <laughs> and this time around, you guys, we got to do it again. We got a new music video, and this time the new song, of course, was the theme song from last season, Stand Up Revolution. So now, ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of Stand Up Revolution by Ozo Motley. We were inside instead of out here parking cars. Stop dreaming, bro. We got a gang of cars to park. Let's go, man. Next Thursday. Hey, that's right. Big Daddy's coming to town, girl. Get ready for a revolution in comedy. You better not pee on me. Gabriel Iglesias presents Stand Up Revolution. It's a scary place. New episode next Thursday at 10.